Carol Abraham has a master's in law, and currently he's not working on one doctorate, but two. In recent years, when he's not disposing of bombs or flying a helicopter, he's been riding MotoGP and Moto2 before that. Carol was a likeable and interesting character, so I said to him, what's your best race? Hello, Simon. So you asked me about my best race ever. I think you should know very well that it is not that easy to say because I had so many races that were great. I mean, in uh, MotoGP, there have, been, there have been several races like uh, in Assen where I was position number seven, uh, Jerez, my very first year when I was on P7 on wet, that was, that was amazing as well. Uh, Moto2, well, I had quite a few good races, uh, but the two best ones was one in Japan when I finished third, and it was basically the last corner fight that was, that was amazing. And the best race that I have ever done is, I'm gonna have to say, it's gonna be Valencia. Valencia 2010 when I won Moto2 race. It was the very first season of Moto2 and my only season in Moto2. And I know we were struggling a bit throughout the season because we had a bike that was not working really well. And then middle of the season, we decided to change to a different manufacturer and instantly we got so much faster. And then uh, at my home track, which is by the way, just about three kilometers away from here, uh, I had a big accident in a penultimate corner. Uh, I was unconscious for a while and I, I couldn't race. I couldn't focus on anything. You know, I was always out of focus and it, it was I had some difficult times and I thought that this might be my career record, but fortunately not. I was able to get back on the bike and with the new manufacturer bike, as I told you earlier, everything was going really well. I finished third in Japan and then got to Valencia winning the race. Honestly, of course, I was really nervous before the race and uh, I knew that I can fight for the podium, even though it, uh, it is going to be very difficult. But that's what was going on. I was uh, in a race all the time with the group fighting for, for the podium or actually uh, for the first place. It was me, Julian Simon, it was uh, Andrea Anoni, and it was Thomas Lete for most of the race or at least the last part of the race. And yeah, going to the last corner, Tony Elias, uh, sorry, going to the last lap, Tony Elias was overtaken quite hard. And for a moment, I was even fourth. But I was still thinking, you know, I know there are some corners, there are some places where I will be able to stick it in and overtake the other riders and get my positions and hopefully finish on the podium. But what happened, Tony Elias, who was already the world champion, with the, he, had the, he had the special silver fairing, so uh, he looked very cool and in front of his home crowd, he really wanted to uh, prove that he is the champion. So he pushed a bit too hard and corner number one, two, three, four. In corner number four and corner number five, he attacked the other riders a bit too hard. He overtook, and I believe it was uh, Yannoni and Julian Simon, and he crashed into him, went into the gravel and fell. So basically, uh, he was out of the race. But what happened, I was just behind them. And what happened, sorry for the interruption, I had a phone call and I had to dismiss that. But anyway, uh, where did I end? Yeah, Tony Elias, he was a bit too hungry to, uh, to get that win. So he attacked into the corner number and I again forgot one, two, three, four, four and five. And when he overtook Yannoni and Simon, he went wide into the gravel where he fell off. But Yannoni and Simon had to go wide because he pushed them out basically. So the door opened a bit for me and I tried to go in. And then I saw Simon was coming back into the, into the apex. But I was like, okay, this is my chance. I got to do it. And I just opened the throttle and went in there and if you see the video from from the action you can see that simon had to because he was already coming in he had to pick up the bike because i just suddenly appeared in front of him so i gained some advantage i gained some gap but i knew at the same time that right behind me there is simon but there is andrea Anoni. and uh you probably know andrea Anoni. he sometimes can uh, be riding a bit crazily and i knew that he was gonna fight for the win and he was going to do everything and you know I know that he can even he can even crash you know in order to try to win and I was like oh god he's behind me which which strategy should I choose defensive or offensive should I should I be more careful and close the door or should I try to make uh, my best line well I decided that 
the best option will be to choose my qualifying line and try to make as fast lap as I can. And this is what I did. I know that right behind me, well, I saw it on a video later on. I didn't know it through the race. Uh, Simon and Janoni, they were, they were fighting together and uh, they were overtaking each other. And I remember watching the video with the Czech commentary when they were overtaking each other into the hairpin. Uh, the Czech commentator, he said, uh, well, yeah, they are fighting for a second place in the championship, but we don't care at the moment because Carl is leading. We want him to win. So that was, that was kind of cool, you know, and uh, it didn't happen for a long time uh, in Czech Republic to have a Grand Prix, motor motorcycle Grand Prix winner. So anyway, I was on a bike. I was really nervous and I was going into the last corner and I was like, I got to break really late, but I got to be very precise. Don't make a mistake. Getting in on a, on a finish line, you know, seeing the guy with the checkered flag, I was behind the fairing as much as I could, you know, upshifting, trying to, you know, push the lever as hard as I can so I wouldn't miss shift or something. And I was looking at the guy at the marshal, you know, waving the checkered flag. I was looking at him like, is it really a checkered flag? Is it really the finish of the race? Did I really pass the line first? And I did. You know, the feeling was just absolutely amazing and I would be so happy to get that feeling again. I mean, now I'm not, not in, a, in a part of MotoGP anymore and I'm really glad that I was able to, at least one time in my li uh, life, get this feeling, get the feeling to climb on the top of the, of the podium, to be the best man of a day, you know, the fastest guy and everybody else was behind me. Uh, that, was, that was just great. And also, that was my last race in Moto2, and next year I was supposed to go to MotoGP, and some people said that no rider should go to MotoGP unless they win at least one race in a lower class, which was Moto2 by the time. Uh, it still is, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, I did. You know, it was my last chance, and I turned it into, into a first place, and it, I, I don't even know what to say. It was just great. So anyway, thank you very much for listening. I hope you will get that feeling of winning as well and see you next time. Goodbye.